In this video, I'm going to talk a bit about me, which is not something I'm used to. So um, let's see how this goes. But several of you, of you have asked about my day job and what I actually do for a living. Some people have accused me of not having a job, um, which is presumably because I have long hair. And if you don't fit the stereotypes of the office worker, then surely you're a work shy bum. Um, but I'm pleased to report that I'm not a work shy bum. Um, I, I work incredibly hard uh, on a day job, uh, which is something I've been doing for 11 years in this specific um, field. And um, I also make these videos. These videos are not easy, especially the rate I churn them out. So um, yeah, do one. Um, but um, more about me, let's start with basics. Um, always been a car nut since a very young age. People ask how I know so much about cars. It's quite simple. I read car books for fun when I was a child. Uh, I've got reference books that were given to me when I was 10 years old. And I would obsess over these books and read them cover to cover endlessly. Um, some of them were literally just facts on every single car made in a certain time period. A to Z cars, 1945 to 70 being one of them. Which is why I know quite a lot about classic cars. Well, obviously, I was born in 1978, so a lot of these cars existed before I did but I still know quite a lot about them. I was kind of influenced by my aunt. She was a, a bit of a rebel and worked in the motor trade um, in the 70s, an, an era where women just didn't do that. And um, she, she didn't do all those many years um, working as a mechanic, as you can imagine, pretty tough environment. Um, but later on, she was a van driver still delivering to the motor trade. So I would spend my school holidays um, riding around in her vans, listening to Test Match Special on the radio, which is why I like cricket as well. And um, yeah, she would take me to all these garages and I found it endlessly fascinating as a child. Um, there was just something about older cars, even then, that I just loved the chrome, uh, the styling, the noises, all the different noises and the amount of work that went into keeping them on the road. Um, so um, yeah, I, I always wanted to work with cars but it wasn't very easy to do. Um, I um, left school with a reasonable grasp of education, got A's in English, decided to do nothing with that and instead tried to be an engineer. And as any of you who've watched my channel know, I'm not an engineer. Um, a hammer is my favorite tool. I, I just, no, no, my brain is not up to engineering. I, I muck along as best I can, but as best I can isn't great. And it certainly wasn't gonna get me my BTEC National Diploma in Engineering at Solihull College. So um, I went off and did many other things, just had to work my way through loads of awful jobs, like working at QuickSave. That was fun. Uh, I quit that job the day the manager said he could see me in his shoes one day. And um, then I ended up working in IT for quite a while, IT project management, IT support. Um, I just blagged my way into that as a career, paid incredibly well, allowed me to run a Rover P6 V8 as um, everyday transport at one stage. But um, yeah, it was soul destroying. It wasn't what I wanted to do. So um, eventually I packed all that in and became a writer. Let's get into that a bit more and show you how that happened. So in the early days of my career, um, well, not really was a career, it was just something I did. Uh, my writing happened in two places. One of those places was 2CVGB News. This is the newsletter of the Dushavo Club of Great Britain. And uh, I've been a member of that club since I was 18. And the um, first thing I did when I was a member was wrote a letter to the magazine, which is in one from October. No, October's when I joined. It must be November 2000, no, 1996. Oh gosh, that's scary. Um, but writing wasn't something I regularly did until um, an editor called David Marsden took over the magazine and he gave me my own column, um, Dolly Wobbles. Uh, where I'd just witter on about whatever was interesting me at the time. You'll note there's a slight discrepancy there. That's, that's clearly Ellie the 2CV, all wobbly for the artwork. But um, yeah, I, I've changed surname. Uh, I was um, born Ian Green, um, but when I got married to Rachel, I took her surname uh, because she didn't want to change and I didn't want to have a different surname. And um, I think that served me quite well. I quite like Ian Seabrook. I think it's a really nice name. But I had a monthly column, so every month I had a deadline, I had to make words happen. And that was a great training ground, because you're just thinking, what am I going to write about sometimes? 
and uh, that's where I really developed the love for writing, uh, just flowing. And I'm afraid to say that um, I was getting paid quite a lot of money to work in IT project management doing admin, and there'd be many quiet moments that were spent writing stuff like this. Uh, it never got in the way of the day job, but if I was bored, I would write a feature, and that was kind of a coping mechanism because there were very many boring moments. So that's how we got started, and the other way was through the um, AR Online website. It was the unofficial Austin Rover website back then, uh, run by Keith Adams, and uh, a superb website. You can go and lose yourself there for hours. And there's probably still blogs I wrote around this sort of time um, up on there, one of which might have been about my Rover 414, thinking about it, which is similar to the 45 I own now. Um, but this was all 12 years ago. Crikey, but things were about to change. This is the exact moment my life changed forever. Um, I'd, I'd done a bit of work for Classic Car Weekly, um, submitting the odd tiny little news story, but um, I read a feature on saloon cars by Nick Larkin, who was um, then a contributor and still is on Classic Car Weekly. And um, I decided to copy the format and uh, I did a feature on the States because I've always loved load luggers and uh, I didn't provide any of the documentation, the photos. I just did the words. And this was the first time my new married name, I got married in 2006. So this is the first time it appeared in print. And um, that was me off to a flying start. Uh, I was absolutely thrilled. And then I ended up submitting these chasing cars. Um, the title of it inspired Snow Patrol um, to come up with their song. Uh, that title came up, um, that was the brainwave of my friend and colleague Richard Gunn. Um, I believe that's him there driving an MX-5, which has been horribly photoshopped because it should be blue. Um, but, but yes, I, I would go and drive cars that were for sale. I remember this chap because I remember him saying how he, he would never recycle his stuff because he didn't want to root through his rubbish to um, separate it. He didn't seem to understand that you don't root through your rubbish to separate your recycling. Anyway, it's amazing what you remember, isn't it? Um, that's the best part of 12 years ago. But, you know, I, I would start doing these and I remember driving an Austin Healey, um, which was rather exciting, and thinking, my, this could be a good way to um, spend my time. I wonder if there's a career in it. And by this stage, uh, I had quit my day job. So this is what I did. Uh, I would drive around the country doing these little reports, getting paid very little money for them. And um, yeah, the problem with this title is you always get distracted by the classifieds. Look at that. Original Reliant Van. Wow. Um, yeah, that hasn't changed. I still get distracted by the classifieds. Um, but by, let's see, let's try this one. I think, uh, no, we'll go there. By March 2007, um, monumental moment uh, I was the features writer and there I am um, there's Richard Gunn um, Keith Adams is now the editor of Parker's Jeremy Savley has done some writing for me uh, Peter Simpson edits classic van and pickup and classic and vintage commercial and F Phil Whedon is still my boss so um, he's now the MD of Kelsey Media and um, we'll get to why that's relevant in a moment and um, yeah, I can't remember what I've got in this one. I'm gonna go and quickly find the right page. Ah oh, yes, here we go. It's now April 2007. I've been employed less than a month on Classic Car Weekly and I'd managed to bag a drive in a Citroen SM. Uh, I've got a photo somewhere of Ellie Park next to that SM because I thought, well, you've got to go in the right car, haven't you? Um, so yeah, that was um, a very exciting moment. Um, because, you know, if you've got a job that gives you access to cars like that, why wouldn't you do it? And as much as I love dreadful cars, um, I've got a big soft spot for some very fancy cars as well. And that was just one of them. I uh, don't know if I've got anything else in that issue. Um, yes, I have, because I wrote a Motorsport Legends feature on the Lancia Fulvia. Um, Lancia Fulvia was a rally car uh, much enjoyed by Pat Moss, Sterling Moss's sister. Um, who I would later get to meet through the course of working on Classic Car Weekly. Amazing times. But all this rather gets away from the fact that I do something very similar now. So um, we'll clear the cardboard for 
these two magazines. These are what I do today. I edit these magazines in full. So um, I take words and take pictures and I turn them into features. So that's a Nissan Silvia, which embarrassingly I managed to completely misspell. Personal blind spot. Uh, I think Silvia's got a Y in it. It hasn't. So apologies to Mark, whose lovely car that is. I went all the way to Netherlands to make that spelling mistake. And there I am. That's me sitting in the back of a Nissan President, which you can't really see much of. But yeah, re retro Japanese, and I also did it classic Jaguar, which is an entirely different world, but nonetheless, I enjoy it. I happen to be a huge fan of Jaguars. And uh, I think I've got a different picture in this one. Yes, me, me with lots of facial hair. Some of that, some of that face fur has now gone. And um, below a brown E-Type V12, surely it doesn't get any better than that. So that's the sort of features we have in um, classic Jaguar. So it, it's interesting how the two worlds compare. Let's um, uh, try and find the contents page here. So yeah, look out of different worlds. There's the Honda making an appearance uh, in a feature about um, snow tires. Quite amused, this Toyota Supra Mark 1 belongs to a chap called Daryl King and I just found a letter in an old copy of Classic Car Weekly where he writes in to point out that um, he owned that car and here we are like 12 years later and um, featuring it again. You won't find many Mark 1 Celica Supras in the UK, very rare cars. But I love retro Japanese especially because I get to really geek out. I feature the cars of my childhood, Nissan Sunny N13s, that's a ZX. I get to do features but nothing more than having a look at car brochures from the, um, oh also, look, headlamp wipers on a pop-up headlamp, oh yes. Um, so yeah, I get to do features like that. And then I get to do features like this, just looking at the brochures of the Honda Civic Shuttle. Um, mate of mine, Dan Hurst, puts these together and he does a great job. So um, yeah, in, in terms of ways to support Hubnut, Buying these magazines works, and you can visit shop.kelsey.co.uk anywhere in the world, and you can buy these magazines, and we ship all over the place. We've got back issues as well. There's all sorts of good stuff up there. So that is still what I do. In terms of Hubnut, I mean, really, Hubnut's only got big in the past year, but I've been working on it as a video channel for probably four years now. Uh, the first drive is a really tentative one where I'm in the Nissan Leaf and I just wanted to record that moment. I'd managed to blag one on test somehow, I'm really not sure how, but thank you Nissan. And um, that is what launched the video side of things. So despite the fact that it's always about cheap, awful cars, that tends to be where, where Hubner is most comfortable. It started as Classic Hub, um, a blog, and then four years ago, I started doing video just because I had a Nissan Leaf. So there you go, you probably didn't expect that, but I do like electric cars. And um, there are several electric tests, including a Tesla and a Volkswagen Beetle that's been converted on my channel if you go and have a breeze through. And um, over the past couple of months, we started doing merchandise as well. And that's all starting to turn Hubner into a business more than just a hobby. And uh, it, it's great that people really latch onto it and enjoy it because it gives me a freedom. I don't get the freedom in these two magazines to talk about stuff like the Invercar. And I could write one magazine feature and that would kind of be about it, really. Um, whereas on Hubner, I can write about this car as much as I like. I can write about the Rover in a way I just wouldn't be able to do anywhere else. It's just... Um, an amazing aspect of life. And I love the immediacy. I love your feedback. Please do leave comments. I try and respond to as many as possible. And um, again, magazines, you get a very occasional letter, um, usually telling you you've done something wrong, but occasionally telling you you've done something right. And that's about it. But each video I put out tends to generate hundreds of comments. And that feedback is wonderful. It's like, okay, how can I improve things? So I do buy a gimbal so I can, do that and um, you don't go wobbling around, you're not shaking anywhere near as much as you used to in the early days. I've got a microphone so the sound is better and if wind is blowing you don't just get the wind noise. Um, this is all feedback that comes from you. I will try and find cars that you want me to drive, that's not always easy because um, the day job comes first. So when I'm on the road I'm 
you know, putting together features for these. I will try and do videos if I can. You've recently had a glut of road tests and um, that's because I had the opportunity while I was away. And yet they're all very short and sharp. That's because um, on the one day, I think I recorded something like six videos. So you can't take your time over them. I literally just put my phone in the car and talk to it and a video happens. Um, I try and do as much editing on the phone. So I try to only record what I want. Um, so you won't get multiple camera angles. You won't get, um, you know, fancy drive-bys because that's just not how I operate. Uh, th there's rarely time to do that. And if you want to see something, then I'm just going to have to keep it simple. But that philosophy seems to be working. And um, oh, it's, it's been wonderful to see how Hubnut has developed. It's been wonderful to see your love for this ridiculous little car. A uh, little car I don't think I can ever sell now because I think I love her almost as much as some of you do. Almost. Some of you may love her more. But um, yeah, all I can say is um, that's me. Um, I am a, a writer. I'm a wordsmith. Uh, I never call myself a journalist because that implies a level of training and professionalism that frankly I don't have. Um, but writer, editor, I make magazines happen. I also enjoy making videos happen and long may it continue. Um, it certainly will do with your support. So thank you very much. Um, don't forget you can visit the store when we've actually got some stock. We're having a massive refit of the house at the moment. So we've deliberately kept the stock levels low. We will be getting more during September. Um, that's at uh, hubnut.fws.store or um, yeah, just leave comments and um, yeah, I look forward to reading them. Thank you very much and uh, I shall see you in a future video. Farewell.